Hello, my name is Armes Mikalovskas. I'm a senior performance consultant working for Percona right from Lithuania. In today's tutorial, I'm going to lose some MySQL data and then we're going to get it back. Let's get started. I have a standard Sakila database ready here. Most of you probably know what is the Sakila database. And for those who don't, you should check dev.mysql.com slash doc. The database itself really does not matter all that much. What matters is the table we work with has to be AnnoDB for the obvious reason that this is AnnoDB data recovery tutorial. For this tutorial, I will be working with address table, but it could be any table. Though I'd not mean AnnoDB recovery tools don't have limitations in terms of column types. For example, blobs aren't yet supported. In my terminal window, you can see two tabs. A Linux tab is used for connection to the Linux server, which is running MySQL, and I will use Mac terminal only as a clipboard. Anyway, so I have a fresh MySQL 5.1.34 with ExtraDB plugin installed here, and I have just loaded Sakila database. Let's look at the address table. There it is. Uh, at this point, I'd like to know that it is really important to have table structure in some form. Most importantly, it has to be most up to date. If you have the original FRM file, that will do. In this example, we'll just copy over structure assuming we took it from some older backup or some development machine. I'll just copy it over to separate window for now. To make things more interesting, let's do some modifications for the table. First, we'll update one record. You see, the thing is, AnnoDB will create a copy of a row with updated data, and it will also leave the old record in place for a while, until, until it's overwritten with something else. It's really important to get it right while recovering the data. You'll see that along the way. The second modification we will make is we're going to remove one record from the table unless what we're doing is recovering deleted records. You'd usually not want to see deleted records in the recovered table. And so it is also important to get that right. These are the two records I will be messing with. First, I'll disable foreign keys to avoid running into constraint check problems. Now, I'll delete record number 400. And update the record number 500. Before losing the data, I want to get a checksum of it to make sure it is the same once we recover it. MD5 will do just fine. So I'll set the pager to MD5 sum. Select star from address. Or I order it uh, by address ID just in case. Okay, so there's the MD5 sum of our data at the current state. Now we're good to drop the table. Whoops. Okay, at this point it is important to understand that once all transactions that started earlier than my transaction stop messing around with this data, 
IMDb is free to overwrite it with something else. It will most likely not happen instantly, but you should not wait for that to happen and do something about it. Options include stopping MySQL and taking a binary copy of the data, taking online snapshot, etc. Since it's just me using this database, I could really just stop MySQL and take a copy uh, of the data. But I'll take LVM snapshot instead and get it mounted. I use LV create minus S4 snapshot minus L4 length, one gigabyte. I'll name it snap and there's my device. And I'll get it mounted on MNT folder. All right. Now that I've taken the snapshot, I'd like to take a minute to talk about inodb file per table. For this tutorial, I'm running MySQL with no configuration. And I'm glad about that because if inodb was configured with inodb file per table, dropping inodb table would result in IBD file being removed from the disk. In which case, I would first have to get the file with the help of file system recovery tools. Only then I could really work on the data recovery with INDB recovery tools. With some file systems like XFS, file system recovery is not all that easy. Having single IB data file, however, does not have this problem. It never shrinks, so there's a great chance I will be able to find my data there if I dropped the table just recently. Data corruption is a different case, however, as well as few records being dropped or updated, for example. If we want to get old version of these rows or recover what's recoverable after corruption, we will be able to recover from IBD files just as we would from single IB data file. Okay, now let's get back to recovery. What we want to do now is find recovery tools and get them installed. Let's use Google for that. Here they are. Let's copy the link and put it in TMP folder. Let's extract them. Currently, inodb tools are designed in a way so that you have to recompile the constraints parser for different table definition. Constraints parser is basically the core of uh, inodb recovery tools. You can also include multiple tables in a definition file, though I really think it makes much more sense to work with single table at a time, especially if you have just one table to deal with. What we want to start with is getting table definition header for our table. Create defs.pl is a tool to do the thing. It wants to connect to MySQL server that has the table structure in question, so it can create the table defs file. Let's use create table statement that we copied earlier to create an empty table in a test database. First, we want to disable foreign key checks again. Now we can copy the structure and paste it here. Okay, we have the table created. And let's run createDevSPL against it. and put it right where uh, inodb tools expected. 